when you start to do some research, and this is coming from Jeremy Fowler with ESPN, and it made me want to do a little bit more research on the player because then I had to ask the gang of seven. Okay, we about, went in depth on this. I went in depth. I like I, it. I just wanted to know. I just wanted to know because sometimes, you know, Jeremy Fowler, I think Jeremy Fowler at ESPN does a really, really nice job with his content. And, but, you know, he, and he actually his, the title of his piece was Roquan Smith's Trade Fits. And there's 10 teams with picks, salary cap space for the Chicago Bears linebackers. So he wanted to go through and, and, and kind of say the teams that would be the best fits for Roquan Smith. And so I said, okay, well, let's see what, what list he's got here. So he starts off with Seattle as the number one team. Mm. I'm like, okay, great. Seahawks, fine. Kansas City was another team he mentioned, you know. So because what happens, Paul's the gentleman's name, who is the uh, Chicago Bears GM, worked at Kansas City. Okay. So there might be some connection there between the Chiefs and the Bears as far as for Roquan Smith. Atlanta. That's a team that we mentioned. Uh he's a Georgia guy, right? Yeah. Head home. Yeah. Well, uh Ryan Pace, who was the GM in Chicago, just got hired in Atlanta. Okay. As a senior personal executive. So the Falcons might and, and Ryan Pace is the one that drafted him in two thousand eighteen. So again, we're start. How about you know we're you know, we're talking about kind of those young teams. You were you were saying you know you mentioned here here's the here's the first one, the under twenty five team, Atlanta. Would they add a player like this? You know, that'd be interesting there. The Dolphins were another team because the Dolphins love to make splash type trades and signings and stuff. They've got about you 90- do that on purpose. Dolphins make a splash. Dolphins trade. make no, splash. You, you know, I didn't think about that, Lucius. I just said it. Sorry, man. Yeah. Still getting the coffee into the system, bro. I'll tell you what, though. I appreciate you pointing that out. Dolphins yeah, that's trying, paying attention. Yeah. That is paying attention. Dolphins making a splash, like Lucius is talking about. They're interested in doing that. They have about $19.5 million in cap space, and they're lacking a marquee guy on that defense to comp- complement their cornerstone pieces elsewhere. So seems like they'd have a hell of a team if they got him. Yeah. I mean, they already are a pretty good playoff contender. Yeah. The Denver Broncos, are another team mentioned. Broncos have been actively searching for linebacker help. George Patton faced uh, Smith twice a year while with the with the Vikings until 2021. So he knows what the player can do. The Chargers, Los Angeles Chargers, are mentioned. So there's there could be Brandon Staley has a connection with Smith from his days in Chicago when he was there. Are they not even going to put... You got, you got eight teams on this so far, don't you? Yeah. How about this? The Lions, then the Commanders, Ravens, and now your Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Yeah, you at least got to put them on the list. Yeah. I, they're, they're fairly solid at linebacker. I'm sorry, Brian. I, I think for any team, if you're going to give up significant draft capital and then $20 million for an inside linebacker, I don't know if you're paying that much attention. I, I just maybe your gang of seven is going to tell us he's that special, but I mean you're a linebacker. I only can pay so many guys twenty million dollars. I'm thinking wide receiver, corner, uh, defensive end. Obviously, I'll do defensive tackle. I mean, I'll do all the offensive line spots before I'm thinking of that kind of commitment at linebacker. Unless you are so good at coverage that you're like locking down the Travis Kelseys and you're getting me like. I don't know, five to eight sacks per year. Mm-hmm. Like you got to be a demon in the pass defense game. I, I I can't just take a linebacker that sometimes affects the passing game for for that much money that and, much and money. draft capital. That's that yeah. stuff. I'm sure somebody will do it. But this this is I think the next position to come along, like similar to running back, has where there's got to be a significant market correction unless you can defend the pass. Yeah, we're talking about the Cowboys here, and I like what you're saying. By the way. I think you make a really, really good points about it. Uh, what'd you say? The the Cowboys have been very prudent in their pursuit of talent with the priority of homegrown talent in recent years. Yeah. But it's hard to ignore Smith's fit in a defense as scouts and executives see it because Leighton Van Der Esch on a one-year, $2 million deal signed in March suggests he's not a long-term answer. Michael Parsons considering too good to be a pass rush only to stay at linebacker for too long. And the Cowboys did sign Anthony Barr. Now, that's the reason why I don't think they would go do this because of Barr. I I felt like they were going to add a linebacker, and I felt all along they were doing it because they were waiting on 
Favre's contract to come down, his demands. So yeah, they don't have a need. They don't. They, yeah. they don't need a body. Yeah. But also, it showed you what they have budgeted for a linebacker. Okay. Now this is what's interesting, though. And and you know we've we've talked about what it would cost, and executives around the league. And this is not my gang of seven, but executives from this interview says that you could probably get him for a third round pick. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because he's demanding a big contract. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That changes so, it a little bit. All right. So now I, now I reach out to the Gang of Seven, and my question to the Gang of Seven was simply, would you trade for Roquan Smith? One of my guys said this. It's a tough one. Really like the player. Active, productive, three-down player. Oh, he kind of fits what you're talking about. Can I get some a little coverage? Bit. Yeah, yeah. Can I get some coverage? Can I do, you know, can I, can I keep, you know, keep you on the field? Depends on the compensation, which it seems like to be with Fowler's article, they think that it's going to be a third round pick. So, and then his player compensation's got to be a bigger. Yeah, and my guy said this. He says, "I have to have a deal done before the trade. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do this unless I have a deal done. I'm not going to make this trade and then try and negotiate a contract." So he's he's saying, "No, I need to know the I need to know his compensation." He says this, though, again, he says, I do worry about giving a 20 million plus contract to a small inside linebacker. They tend to wear down fast. Hmm. No, I'm not. A lot of linebackers do wear down fast. They do wear down fast. High collision spot. He said this, though, to close. If the Cowboys are pushing hard and can fit the contract, then yes, I make this deal. Hmm. Okay. Another one of the gang of seven told me, he said, I would need to know how much he's asking for in the extension, but purely on football, absolutely, I would. So, okay, now we got that. Yeah, he's a hell of a player, and he would make this team better. There's no doubt about that. It's just like, when do you fire bullets, and who do you fire them at? Final guy got to me, back to me. So we got three opinions here. This guy said probably not. Here we go. What's he got to say? Combination of draft capital. Now, he thinks you'd probably have to give more. Okay. Draft capital you'd have to give up and pay him might be hard to swallow. I'm not a fan of paying linebackers 18 plus million dollars. Yeah, it's just so hard. There's so many other positions. And when a linebacker plays well, you see it a lot. You're like, oh, look at that. He's running all over the place. He's tackling everybody. But like, a, 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 for a significantly less money, you get a lot of that production still. You know, like it's not like great defensive ends. I have a great defensive end. He's going to get 20 sacks. If I get a, a, a really cheap version of him, it might be two sacks at linebacker. Oh, I got the best linebacker. He got 110 tackles. The next best linebacker doesn't get 10% of his production like it can at defensive end. It's 80 or 85% of it for $2 million bucks instead of $18 million. So it's a real big economic puzzle. And that's why a lot of the smart teams... Now, it's happened occasionally with a Bobby Wagner or something. But you need real special players and real special circumstances for those guys to impact winning on a similar level. Over four seasons, Smith has reached elite status by filling up the stat sheets we're seeing here. He's got 524 tackles, 43 for loss, 14 sacks, 17 pass deflections, and five interceptions. He ranked fifth in the league in tackles last year with 163. A lot of tackles. Yeah. See, the thing about it is, man, that is a super productive player. He right is. There. Yeah, but but you only gave me one and a half picks per year and okay. three sacks. Okay, that's cool. You've on, you've stopped. What 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 have you stopped? Eight drives over four years. Yeah, with a big sack or a turnover. And you know, meanwhile, Trevon Diggs is over here. He's gotten you eleven. Right, So do I want to go look for another corner? I got $20 million to spend. Do I want to go look for another corner who can stop some of the best wide receivers and get me a lot of takeaways? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to get a guy that stops running backs? You know why he did that? Because the Chicago defense was trash. Right. There, there. Somebody had. It, it's. It's like Dwight Powell. For those years, somebody had to get rebounds from the big man position for the Mavericks. 
Sure. And, you know, if if you're a, a good player who can get to the ball on a bad defense, I do imagine you're going to get a lot of tackles. Do you, do you worry, real quick here, do you worry more about teams running the ball on Dallas or throwing the ball on Dallas? Um, For this year, probably running. Yeah. You know, this guy do anything for you? Just make uh, he, would, he would make you better. He I would know. make you better. I, I, just, I need that twenty I, no, million. I think you're. I think you're onto something. I'm not going to disagree with you because, like the gang was talking about, hey, they need to know the compensation. Yeah. They need to know. And there's, you know, one of the guys is like, listen, I'm not interested in paying the linebacker eighteen million dollars. Great yeah. cash, homie. But you have to. You're going to have to pay this Michael Parsons. Get ready for that. Yeah. Well, and this yeah. team just paid Jalen Smith eleven million dollars. So, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and if they got him, I would be ecstatic. Sure. You know, because now you have a path to victory. But nothing from this team's actions has said this is a go for it year. This is kind of a let it turn year, and maybe we'll still make the playoffs. And maybe if our defense is number one in the NFL, we could win a playoff game or two. I just it feels like there's no chance they would actually do it. But if they did, boy, that would be really exciting. Would be.